Oh, fucking shit. It's Cole. Welcome to Waste of Potential Podcast. I'm Ronnie. I'm... Jade, fuck. We're not having sex. We're in a... We're in an ice machine. <laughs> Fucking, uh, we decided to podcast in person, so we rented, well, we had Dan, uh, who's here. Say hi, Dan. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, you guys are assholes because this is a wonderful gift for y'all, but you are very ungrateful. <laughs> we said to get it. A- Why are we fishing on a pool? <laughs> we said to get a cabin. You got an ice fishing cabin, you cheap shit. So we're watching a shitty movie on a box TV with on a DVD. The Airbnb ad showed palm trees, so I was pretty confident. <laughs> okay. You have Airbnb? <laughs> yeah, supposedly someone lives here. <laughs> okay, fuck. Come oh. on, I'm freezing. Let's keep going here. Okay, Dan picked the movie. Right. We're watching Welcome to Mooseport because fuck us and sex. So let's just start the movie. Dan, hit Yay. play. All right. All right. Uh, we put it in the DVD, and I'm excited, gentlemen, aren't you? Ray Romano is my favorite. says Christmas like Ray Romano. Yeah, I know. And Wait. Why Hugh is it freezing? Jack- Not Why Hugh is it freezing? Jackman. Gene Jackman. Gene Hackman. What the what, what the fuck is wrong with this? Why is it not working? Uh, hit it. You oh, hit I it. I did buy it from a bootleg Chinese boy, so I'm not sure. What, what, what kind of Chinese? That's how we got COVID? <laughs> what kind of Chinese boy has a copy of <laughs> Open the Moose Port? Uh, somewhere in town. I don't know. I that the all talk could find. Suppose it's high demand for the holidays. You bought this DVD at a wet market? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Next to the Gremlin store, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, okay, well... Gosh, we'll, damn it. Well, now we can't watch Welcome Sorry, to the What the fuck are we gonna do now? Did you bring anything else? I do have one other film. What? It's on DVD. It's called The Room. No. Oh my yes. god. No. Yes. No! Yes! Doritos! Doritos! <laughs> We're doing it, people. Merry Christmas. Take it away, Tommy. Waste Potential Podcast is brought to you by Welcome to Mooseport, home of the Claus Kiss Christines. This Christmas, invite this angelic and pure group to come and spread cheer. Have a very white Christmas with voice like Hilda, Gildas, and other. Sing high great hits like white, white Christmas. Join the Mooseport KKK today. Waste Potential Podcast is brought to you by Has Been Toys. It wouldn't be the holiday season without these amazing additions to Has Been Toy Line. Like, one, never been fucked. A purity ring inspired by the 1999 film Never Been Kissed, starring Drew Barrymore Cox. (laughs) Wait, I've already seen this film. And it's ironic because... They had been fucked. That's a, that's a deep cut there, Ron. Deep cut. <laughs> well, that's deep. All right. Or Chunky, a killer red-headed doll that fat shames kids into suicide. Oh, God. At least you don't have diabetes. Oh. Or three, anti-vaxxer Andy doll. Freedom never tasted so Ugh. Man, I really like Bill Gates now, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, or another toy, such as Alien vs. Child Predator doll. <laughs> Comes with candy, white panel van, and bursts onto your chest. So does this mean that a xenomorph hunts child predators? Because that sounds like something we should really invest in. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like just happiness for everyone. And lastly, but who could forget, G.I. Jomo sexual action figure. <laughs> it comes with a Pride Flag and Kamala 2024 bumper sticker, which they never made. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most unbelievable part of this toy. <laughs> uh Okay, Buy sure. one of these shit toys today. Oh, 
I hear those bells? It must be that time of year again. <gasps> it's Christmas time with Wasted Potential. And who else would I have with me other than myself and two other people? Welcome. So today we're going to be watching The Room because Welcome to Mooseport doesn't work. <laughs> we're going to have special trivia, a special game called Two Truths, One Why So a drink, we're going to sell you shit, and then we're going to get presents at the end. No need to listen now. <laughs> okay. All right. Introduce yourself, you two other fucks. I'm Ronnie. I'm Dan. Dan's homeless. All right. <laughs> Please help. The holidays are the worst for me. Okay. So um, sh I think Shane and Dan might have some trivia planned for us, maybe. Uh, I've got a couple shot, shot or nots. Okay. Oh fuck. Okay. So then I I planned this game. <laughs> I planned this game called Two Truths and One Y Zone, in which um I'll get into more details later, but I'll have two things that are true about the room and one that's fake, and then they have to guess which one is the fake one, loser drinks. Our drink for this holiday season is one I concocted called the chocolate candy cane. It's a chocolate liqueur and peppermint schnapps, and it tastes like a hangover. Yay. Mm. Mm. Let me taste it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Oh, that mm. candle cure. Tastes like America. And mm. uh, finally, hawking the wares out there. Um, uh, please subscribe or whatever to some podcast place. Follow us on Instagram or uh, Twitter. And please send in all Woodsboro Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Department applications to podcast waste potential at gmail.com. Uh, before I, before we start this thing here, we usually have drinking games, so Dan and Shane can prepare the drinking games. What are the drinking games? Anytime someone gives Johnny a compliment, it happens a lot. <laughs> Johnny was very insecure when he wrote this. Oh, man, I got the booster yesterday and it fucked me up. Oh. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> What's your drinking game, Dan? Dan? Uh, oh, uh, sorry, I was texting you the thing. Dan uh, has just... 20 minutes to live, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it was my fifth J&J &J shot. Um... <laughs> uh, my drinking game is... Oh, I forgot. San Francisco Skyline. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah, it's that one. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, my drinking game is every time you see the San Francisco Skyline, which is a lot. Yeah. Okay, and also on top of this, we have secret drinking games that we each know about each other. So whenever the secret game is is done, we'll wait a few seconds, then we'll say drink, and then the other person just try to guess what the game was. So we'll see if we can guess what's going on as we get more and more drunk. So welcome to our Christmas podcast. Once again, about a movie that has nothing to do with Christmas. Are you boys ready? And the game is on. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Okay, Shane, count us in. Wait, where are we at? Mm, one second. Merry Christmas. Go. All right. Why So Films, his own production company. You know, this is long overdue. This is kind of like what everyone starts off like wanting to do. Because what do you this mean? Is, this is the movie. This is the movie that started the love of fucking hating movies. Or enjoying bad movies. It's incredible. It's really a... It's really special how yeah. terrible it is. Shane, did you watch this again before this? I've seen this movie like 27 times, yeah, so yeah. It, I don't need to watch anything. I literally I, watch it once a week in college. I Jesus did Christ. the same thing, and I watched it alone last night for the first time. It It's not fun alone. <laughs> it's I, not fun alone. <laughs> it's not fun alone. I go on record as legitimately hating this movie, and I don't find any redeeming qualities <laughs> in it. Like there's, there's things that are funny, but it just frustrates me as i watch money burn on screen <laughs> and great. we drink right the, uh, we drink the right synopsis? for the, for, oh, for yeah, the very yeah. first one yeah in san francisco we follow johnny a man who has a girlfriend lisa and is also his best friend mark lisa has been cheating on johnny with mark and johnny doesn't know it while johnny ever find out will mark still be johnny's best friend watch the room <laughs> <laughs> i think rudy wrote it what a synopsis. So I actually have the physical like DVD in my hand. you want to hear like the synopsis of it? Please. Yes. <clears throat> the Room. 
is an electrifying American black comedy about love, passion, betrayal, and lies. What happens in real life? It's what happens in real life. You could be with your loving woman and all of a sudden, boom, she's in bed with your best friend or family member. The Room depicts the depths <laughs> the depths of friendships and relationships in one's life and realizes life's real and most asked questions. Can you ever really trust anyone? Or are you ready to see reflections of your life? And yeah, that's all, that's all into this black comedy. I like how it's like, in the next moment, she could be sleeping with your best friend or family member. <laughs> Is it, who does she sleep with? There's Tommy on the tram. This room. So we, we get introduced to the room. <laughs> I hate this I movie, and I don't find it. In, I don't find it entertaining. But I find it entertaining is just like the the bonds that the three of us have had watching this movie. <laughs> who who had to sit in this casting direction, like where she shows up and she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna try out for this part in a movie." And he's like, "Oh, hi there." And she's like, "Oh no, this is this is who's gonna direct it." He's like, "I'm not be your lover." <laughs> <laughs> um. Shane, you can drink. Oh. <laughs> mm. Nice job, Dan. Um, so you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give away my, my hand right now. I hate this movie. I watched half of it and stopped. My preparation for this is I read the Disaster Artist uh, book. What a nerd. Instead of re- watching the movie, you read a book? And that was your preparation <laughs> for a movie podcast? Fucking nerd. <laughs> the only interesting thing about this film is everything behind it. The actual stuff on screen is boring as shit and like and like embarrassing to watch. So all my trivia I have for my special game is based upon what Greg Sestero, the quote unquote author of the bo- book, has about things behind the scenes, which is fucking fascinating. He's a terrible writer and he's so into himself. But what I recommend is if you Want to read it? Listen to the audiobook because he sounds like he's drunk and he's reading it. It's awesome. <laughs> this nigga is sons of bitches. <laughs> I was a fucking star. I, I could play college football. So here's Denny. Denny was <laughs> inter- introduced. <laughs> Not Danny. Denny. Denny's a pervert. And Denny likes to watch people fuck. <laughs> Sounds like a public service announcement. Denny's a pervert. <laughs> See, Denny. Denny's a pervert. <laughs> don't act, don't be a Denny. I just want to try and act with my wife like Johnny acts with people to see if I'll still be able to get her in bed. <laughs> Jesus, Denny! <laughs> he's like sex pervert. He's like twenty-seven years old. He he's, he is besides Johnny. I think he's the oldest person on the cast. <laughs> oh my god! Really? Um, there's. There's some other people that are obviously older, but of all the young people in this that all look young, he's older than them by, I think, four or five years. Uh, I think the mom's the youngest, though. <laughs> Lisa's mom. This movie is literally like an alien wore someone's skin and then wrote a movie. <laughs> Didn't just write it. Wrote it, produced it, and yeah. and then directed it, too. The whole shebang. Yeah. How did this get so big? Like, who saw this and was like, oh my Do you want me to God. tell you the story behind it, actually? I kind of want to hear how it got big. Really quickly, um, two film students that were in L.A. saw it, and that the sign, according to Greg Sestero, they saw the sign saying, no refunds if you buy this movie because it was making no money. So they mm-hmm. went in there and saw it, and they told everyone in their film class about it, and then that's just how it built up in L.A., and then from there it became a, a huge like thing on the West Coast and then slowly spread. Oh my god that's wow crazy. so then there's this beautiful beautiful sex scene um, okay so i have a couple shots or not based off this and a couple other sex scenes okay yeah <laughs> you only focus on the sex scenes it's awesome <laughs> yeah um, well it's not that hard it's the same sex scene done again yeah twice roses roses, <laughs> I, roses side note uh, roses. we're not listening to the film but we're like we're, we're watching it, and then there's subtitles, and all these songs are subtitled. It's pretty delightful. Oh, my God. It's a, it's a, it's the same two lines over and over again. It's wonderful. When I see your face, mm. it stirs up my emotions. <laughs> what emotions? What if I get angry when I see your face? <laughs> so, for these shots or not, do you want to know the... Would you rather have this one be about the 
this sex scene or about all of them? Oh, this one. This this, this one. one. God, look at his skin. It looks like it's melting. Okay, uh, shot or not, this sex scene is over three and a half minutes long. Oh, fuck. That's a good one. Yes, I, I timed it. <laughs> Stopwatch. <laughs> I'm going to go false. I think the other one's longer. This one's long. Three and a half minutes. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, it is false. It is exactly three minutes. Give, oh. or, take, ah. give or take a, a couple seconds. You fucked me. Yeah. And, <laughs> like the sex scene. I ha- Ooh, I, titties. I have... Titties, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I, have, I have the total amount of sex scenes, too. I have also the other two. We can do that later as well. This poor actress. This poor fucking actress. Did she do oh, anything she's else? she's fine. No. Look at Tommy. He's such a catch. Her her story... Oh, God! <laughs> uh, her story's actually really sad. Uh, is it really? Uh, she... I think she... Um, if I remember correctly, she, she like... Um, she was like an actress in high school and then didn't want to do it. Then she just tried out and this is the part she got... And then she had to keep going back to, like, I think a mother or father was dying of cancer. And this is the only title she has. I think she gave up to, like, take care of her family. So she does not have a good, you know, story to tell. This is the only movie she was in. Oh, my God. He's just fucking her. Oh, so he is having oh. sex with her belly button. Oh. The best God. is the mo- best, best of the moanings when you can when you actually oh, listen to the Oh, movie. God! <laughs> so Jesus! Awesome. It's just yes. a blob of skin. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny though is like my favorite part is the um what is he doing um my favorite part is like um is like because the whole entire film had to be 80 yard so then they had to go back and you, and you hear johnny go <laughs> just occasionally just laughing <laughs> like giggling yeah, in the middle that's... of the sex scene yeah. oh man oh, this poor girl has to show her tits this is her only thing i just feel bad for her and there's a lot more boobs than i remember i think this is our first podcast that is, tits. That is true that was excellent. We need to do You're welcome. This. You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. That welcome to moose part didn't work. That one. That one has no tits. That's true. Gene, it does have Gene Hackman's tits. Oh, it has Ray sure. Romano. Sure. Oh, he's a big dumb tit. <laughs> hey, 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 watch it. All right. I, I can always sleep. She just lays back. Goes ah, just like, like, like yeah. Ah, good night. It would have been funnier if he had to put on a sleep apnea mask. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not sexy. Secret. No. 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 God. Oh, God. It's so early today. <laughs> oh, Rose. It's, it's a, That's it's a, a good long ass stem. His obsession Dang. with showing his ass. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, I think you saw some dumb. Ch- chain drink. Oh, I know oh. what this is. What an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, mm. this is. So, so far, we've we've moved in breakneck speed. And we listen to the song that says, I would run through a forest of flames. <laughs> I would stand in the way of a bullet. Oh, mm. so basically Bruno Mars stole it, the grenade song? Yeah. But, um... So <gasps> oh my god. Look at so the background, it's raining. Do you think that's real rain, or do you think someone's spraying a hose in the window? Oh my god. That uh, like I a, think that's actual rain, that's they, but they didn't plan for it. No, yeah, he look at a that. Sunny day. That is some consistent rainfall. I think that's. Oh my god, it's fucking break. <laughs> okay, so now mm-hmm. we're we ha- we know that Johnny is in love with Lisa, and that Denny is a pervert. And we know and that now we get her mom, who's going to tell us that something's wrong, even though we Did... haven't been introduced to that anything is wrong. But... I bet you, I bet you, Denny can get with the mom. I bet you, you could pull it off. <laughs> Add to the cringe, but okay. So this is my biggest complaint about this movie. Is a lot of complaints is I don't understand the fucking timeline. I don't know because the last Mm. scene and then the idea of movie making, the scene that follows is right afterwards. Unless there's some kind of indication, it's not. So they just had sex that she was smiling in, so I think it was good. And now she's like, I don't like him. She's bipolar, on. Yeah, this is just a commentary on bipolarism. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Fuck oh, I knew I recognized that lady. She was in the Christine Kiss clauses. <laughs> <laughs> the claws kiss Christines. Oh my God. Okay. That's Would why you, she has do you cancer. Want to hear your first two truths and a wise o. 
All right, two truths and a wise oh. Yeah, right, tell me which it. of these is going to be a lie. Okay. okay. And interrupt me if something important happens. Okay. Nothing happens. Number one, Tommy, the following is all true about Tommy, except number one, he has a degree in psychology from Lane Community College and was on honor roll. Two, Tommy made the room as a money laundering scheme. And three, Tommy had written uh, had to write down his apartment gate code so you so you wouldn't forget it. That code was one, two, three, four. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Lonnie Mundering scheme. I don't think Tommy is smart Yeah, I, I don't I don't that. think uh, you know what I'm gonna go uh, I wanna say I'm gonna go with Shane, but I'd screw I'll just say three. <laughs> Shane is correct, the money laundering yeah. scheme was a rumor. Everyone on the cast thought that was true, but Greg said there's no evidence to prove it. So sorry, Danny. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And I you watched like remember I watched like an... one, two, three, four. Right. <laughs> well, I watched like the interview with him that Greg is actually talking to him, and like on the DVD, mm-hmm. and he's like so serious about it. So I'm like, there's no way he like laundered money. I don't think. Yeah, no. I think he thought this was no. an art. And now oh, we get introduced to Greg Sestero, aka Mark, and I think Sup, he's champ? the worst. I think he's absolutely the worst because like he's just so. Like, he got so much out of this movie, and he talks so much shit in the book about Tommy, but this is the only reason why he's famous. I know, like... That's yeah, true. And I would rather watch Tommy on screen than watch this fucking paint dry. Like, <laughs> he's a stupid so bitch. dumb. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what are you talking about? Mark, we fucked, like, 18 times. Yeah, they, I, they, they've fucked before, haven't they? I know they yeah. have. It's implied that they've had sex before... But she wants to fuck him, and he's acting like he doesn't want to. But man, does he just his dick just pop up whenever she says his name? I'm laughing too because she's like, "Yeah, you want to come over and fuck me?" Yeah, no drink. Yeah, well, Johnny, Johnny won't know. And then um, Mark's like, "Okay, see you at noon." <laughs> oh, drink. Uh, San Francisco Skyline. Yeah. Oh yeah. And also, okay. and also Shane drink. Mm-hmm. What did I do? I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna. What do you think, Ron? Yeah, that really, it really wasn't. Nah, damn it! Nice. Well, I already drank. Well, <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Mark's like, "Hi, where's Johnny? Wait, why are you touching my cock? The same reason I did it like eighteen other times, Mark." Yeah, I'm oh. confused. What's going on here? I'm like, you dumb. You got a bunch of Rudies in this fucking film. Yeah. I like how he inserted wine pouring noise. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get that same thing in mind. <laughs> like, why? Why do we have to hear it pour? Uh oh. Do you mind? It's, it's a little hot in here. It's hot in here. Well, you have the AC, don't you? San we live in San Francisco. <laughs> it's never hot in here. I was gonna say the exact same thing. <laughs> oh my god, this is incredible. Yeah. Um, I've got trivia for you. To you. Oh my god, Shane looked it up on IMDb right now. Yep. So many. Tr- so oh, oh my god. Tommy Wiseau submitted this to Paramount Pictures, and Paramount Pictures actually agreed to buy it, but Tommy was offended by the price at which they sent him. That was that's true. In the book, so I actually don't know. I'm gonna go false. That's true. Okay, it is false. He <laughs> sent it to. So here's the thing. Tommy Wiseau submitted the film to Paramount to get a distributor. Mm -hmm. Usually it takes about two weeks to get a reply from Paramount. It was rejected within under 24 hours. (laughs) (laughs) So so the person that got it at Paramount was like, okay, let's take a look. Jesus Christ! (laughs) That's the intern watched it, yeah. (laughs) That's the thing about, like, um, let me give you a quote from the the book itself here. Quote from the book of Tommy. Yeah. Well, book of Greg talks about Tommy. What page? What uh, uh, page two, <laughs> verse eleven. It says, "The power of believing in oneself and peril of overcoming self-imposed limitations is what Greg Sestero says positively about Tommy." This movie. What the fuck? <laughs> that, 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 that's a direct quote because I heard that shit. I laughed so hard I had to copy it down <laughs> verbatim. What the fuck? I'm... Yeah. Doesn't make any so, sense. So Tommy stands as a triumph Why is he for even? how to succeed against being stupid it's be- it's okay so so there's a second writer on the book whose name i can't remember and i'm sure oh. he told greg you can't be a complete like cunt to to uh to tommy the entire time you guys are saying positive so the first and last chapter 
Greg kind of like talks about how like at the very least you got to say that Tommy made a movie and it became popular. That's the most yeah. kindest thing you can say about him. Well, I mean, Greg, yeah. you would not be able to talk about this shitty movie if you weren't cast by Tommy. Yeah, you'd be next to me being homeless, jackass. And that's the worst part about reading the book is half of it's about Greg's life. And Greg is so uninteresting. The only parts that are interesting is when it's interacting with Tommy or directly with the room. That shit is hilarious. But whenever it's just about his life, he literally goes through his entire life and all these things. I'm just fast forwarding on the audio book. It's just like he is fucking boring as shit. He, like, does he ramble about his like weirdo. so like interesting life? He just he, he, he talks he talks about being a struggling actor, which is kind of interesting for a little bit, but it's almost like every other chapter is about him. Then it goes to Tommy. He he goes from like chronological his life, and he kind of intercuts with the room stuff. The room stuff is interesting. Greg is boring. Well, and he's yeah. still a struggling actor. Yeah, he struggles to act. Yeah, he exactly. sucks. <laughs> That's the best joke Shane's ever done. Um, All now, right. So now so, these stairs are the most ugh. unconducive to fucking. They have such sharp edges. <laughs> well, You're like my God, oh, well, gentle as a summer breeze. Have you ever seen the movie uh, History of Violence, which I think I mentioned in our podcast before? Yes, um, there's a sex the one with Cronenberg yeah. and uh, Viggo Mortensen, where Viggo Mortensen's like a secret murderer. Yeah, and they sixty nine each other. Yeah, but then, but, but then there's Go a really on. intense sex scene on the stairs, and then the scene afterwards, it shows her back, and Maria Bella's back. It's like bruised as shit. I'm like, Jesus. that's the whole point is showing like the rough of sex. This is just supposed to be sexy, but they're fucking on stairs. <laughs> My sex isn't rough. It just doesn't last long enough to hurt anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if you're Vigo Mortensen, you pound town. Pound t- Oh yeah, of course Vigo pound towns. A rose this is to me, to weird. me, to me, to me, to me. At least, <laughs> to me, to me. It's broken. Oh, fuck. It's the loose board. My city just skipped. He is just sucking on her neck. Dude. Look, they look. She Whoa. Like she, oh, 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 no. Oh, there we oh, go. no. Where's that town. finger going? Like that. Oh, no. Back out. Back out. Ow. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. At least it knows what, what a man wants. This is like softcore porn. Yeah, it's just definitely. a lot of kissing, a lot of kissing. Yeah. And she put a finger up his ass. Yeah, <laughs> without his consent too, right? Huh? I know he didn't say, "Hey, can you put a finger in my ass?" <laughs> yeah, we. I think we missed that part on the uh, subtitles. She looks like Laura Palmer. Oh. Really <laughs> <laughs> you ready for trivia? I don't even care if you get it right. Okay. Okay. Hmm. According to oh, Tommy Wiseau, good. he was quoted as saying, Denny has some sort of mental disorder, <laughs> which he explains his behavior in the film, which explains his behavior in the film. Philip Haldman, Denny, was never told about this quote. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm going to go true because that's a, it's kind of what I know from the book. Uh, yeah, true, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> the director's like, he's some sort of, so he's all fucked up. He's some sort of Rudy, but it's perfect for the film. He's and he's like, he got Rudy yourself. hard. <laughs> Dude, Greg Sestero, like in the book, talks a lot of shit about the movie, but he doesn't even try in this. At least everyone else is trying their best, which includes Tommy, because Tommy tries so yeah. hard and he's just terrible. <laughs> Greg is better than this and he's like i love you whatever like okay whatever i'm aloof i know there is something kind of like off-putting about greg yeah. being the one that talks shit oh, on this drink. movie yeah oh wait wait till later you're gonna have fun with this uh, <laughs> game. all right so tommy drives his mercedes because he's rich it's actually uh, his this, car this this scene is just wonderful. He should have been blasting like Rick Ross. Austin Martin music, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fat motherfucker. <laughs> Look at this dog. <laughs> that dog is dying in like two weeks. <laughs> okay, do you want to know the behind the scenes in this dog? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So everyone on the, the cast and crew, like there's only Greg, uh, Tommy, the sound guy, and the camera guy here. They all mm-hmm. thought that was, that was like a stuffed animal because it wasn't moving. So, <laughs> so Tommy petted it and walked away, and they all freaked out because it moved. And Tommy had to like literally go talk to the person, and say, "Is it real dog?" 
And then, and oh she's like, God. yeah, it's a real dog. Cause they thought it was dead. Like it was stuffed, but it's a real dying, like old dog. It's like 15 years That's old. Awesome. Oh my God. Oh, I love pugs. I hate pugs. <laughs> she and Dan have a love of pugs and they're both stupid. Oh God damn yeah, right. They're just wonderful. Oh God. <laughs> oh, no, no. Run Lisa. Can Run. Denny's going to kill you. Can I kiss you? <laughs> you know what he looks like? Actually, he looks like, um, Brad Dorif, the guy who plays Chucky's and Exorcist Three, he has that face like Brad Dorif. You guys don't know who the fuck that is, but he looks like Brad Dorif. Movie oh, fans Brad? out there. Yes, Brad. <laughs> oh yeah, Brad. Uh, yeah. Hello, Lisa. It seems you've been looking wonderful today. Your skin's so moisturized. <laughs> I couldn't help but watch you and Johnny fornicate with each other last night. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Skyline. Ah, oh, Jesus. That it's wasn't the, that wasn't the skyline, but, but Shane, you got a drink though. What did yeah. I do? This is the whole point. You got to <laughs> guess what the rule was. Yeah, Ronnie and I haven't drank yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hi, babe. <laughs> it's double time. <laughs> what? <laughs> do do the drink? flowers get bigger? <laughs> you, got, you got bigger, more flowers this time. I Johnny, I'm gonna ram my fist through your body and rip it out your goddamn spine. Okay, Shane, keep drinking. <laughs> yes, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I have figured it out. <laughs> it should have been that hard after the first one. Yeah, I really shouldn't have. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be every time I imitate Tommy. That was just gonna be any any impression in general. Yeah, any impression. So Tommy here is upset he didn't get the raise at work. Yeah, they uh, they argue about the raise and. Because she's mad he doesn't get the more money, but then she goes, oh, it's okay, no big deal. It's just a raise. <laughs> okay, here's a really important question. Right. Why is Lisa acting like she loves him right now? She goes, I hate you. Uh, I feel yeah, bad for you. I love you. Like, what is her motivation? Ronnie, life is confusion. <laughs> oh, she yeah, ordered Ronnie. a pizza. Hey, Ronnie, can you ever really trust anyone? Are you ready to see reflections of your life? <laughs> so, is is Lisa's long game to get Tommy to kill himself? Oh, it's genius. My God, so that she can eat oh. his soul. Oh, Scotch-ka. this is the best. Scotchka. We should have made Scotchka drinks. No. <laughs> no the, the one time a bunch of us were watching it, we made Scotchka. Remember that? Why is she putting scotch and vodka and scotch? I think it's ginger ale, but it's it's pretty sure it, it's pretty obvious that Tommy doesn't drink and doesn't understand drinking. Oh, this so you drank this? <laughs> Should, okay, so <laughs> we're gonna start fucking in a second. Do, do you guys want to talk about our each of our first viewings of the room and kind of go through our history here mm-hmm. with Shane? Because mm-hmm. Shane saw it first. Yeah. Okay. So I go first. Yeah, because you saw it first. I saw it last. Mm. So there I was. Approximately 20 years old. Winter's Eve. Don't don't make a story out of it. Drink, Shane. We had had just pirated a film. The Room. I sat down and watched as this alien covered in human skin appeared in front of me. (laughs) Okay, yeah, I watched it with my friends because they said this is the funniest thing ever. And I watched it and we did a power hour with beers. And I laughed my goddamn ass off. And I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god. And then we proceeded to make it a weekly thing. Where every week we'd get together and watch The Room. (laughs) Every week? Jesus Christ. Every week. I haven't seen this in like 10 years. And this is way too soon. (laughs) Yeah, I think last time I watched it it was probably with... You think this is annoying? We had a friend in our group named Lisa... Oh no, that poor, <laughs> that poor woman. Nice legs, I, I, Lisa. <laughs> I have some, I have some fellow uh, hobo, hobo, hoboins uh, down by the bridge there named Mark, and I just cannot stop. After watching watch this, I am never the same again. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> okay, yeah. we are 25 minutes into this movie, and there's been three <sighs> sex scenes. Oh, so, shot or not, the total... He knows what the people want. Minutes. <laughs> the total minutes of this... Of all three sex scenes, is just under seven minutes long. That's a lot of sex. I'm gonna that go is f- longer than I watch any porn. So you're saying true? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say false. I think it's longer than that. 
It is six minutes and fifty seconds. Ah, oh, damn it! <laughs> yeah, Boom. it's again give or take a couple couple seconds. I, I I the first the first two I did when the music started. This this one I did it when I started making out heavily. So they reuse the same footage here. He's doing the rose thing again. <laughs> Every rose. Probably because she's like, I'm not getting naked again. <laughs> okay, are you ready for a two truths and one wizo? Yeah. All right, do it. Okay, the following are sex facts. The following sex facts are true surrounding the room. Oh, boy. Sex facts? Oh, my God. Yeah. Tommy closed the set up and refused all crew except lighting for the sex scenes. Number two, Tommy demanded all actors' moles be covered up in sex scenes. <laughs> and number three, oh the initial God. script included Tommy fucking Lisa's clothes before killing himself. Well, he technically does. Oh, uh. drink. Yeah. So I gotta know what's what's not true. Which one is not true? Two trues, one way zone. Uh, I'm gonna go with the third one because he technically still does that in the in the end. Yeah, it's got to be the last one. The other two are so ridiculous that it has to be true. You're both incorrect. <laughs> oh, Tommy God. did not close the set. He encouraged all cast and crew to be oh, there for I all sex known. scenes. Oh, gotcha. So. So like Tommy literally fucks it like 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 he literally like is fucking the clothes. I know he's smelling it, but he wanted to actually like gyrate on the clothes and actually fuck the clothes before killing himself. So it was kind of a mis mislead there, but both of you drink. Oh my god! But yeah, poor Wait, Juliet so here. I think it's Juliet Lewis is her name, the actress who plays Lisa. Mm -hmm. Every like yeah. everyone felt so bad for her, obviously, because he encouraged everyone to come on set to watch his sex scenes with her. It was and a Juliet Danielle. Daniels, there we go, and then Daniel, uh, yeah. and 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 then this is awful for her too. When uh, she she has moles on her back, like a lot apparently, and when Tommy mm -hmm. saw it, he was like screaming mad at her, and was yelling at the it, makeup department yeah. to cover her back because he thought they were so Aww. disgusting. This oh, movie isn't as fun Lord. anymore now. It's fucking. It's not, and it's. I think it's amazing. No, it, it's it's amazing in like oh my god, Tommy's a monster. Yeah. But honestly, well, like, do you think what? that Tommy was playing the monster director because he thinks that's how directors are supposed to be? To an extent, I think it's true, but Tommy doesn't understand filmmaking at all. I think he just or anything. What he says and what Greg says all the time is, "I have a vision. I have a vision." He wants to do what he wants to do, but he doesn't understand it, and and he just he, he, and he doesn't understand human interaction. Like half the <laughs> not half the quarter. A quarter of the book is Greg apologizing for Tommy. He says all these terrible things about him, but Tommy has a very terrible childhood that we might get to later that it's mm -hmm. hinted at in the book. So you feel for him, but he's also a monster too. So I don't feel bad for him, but I can I understand. Oh, drink again. More cutscenes. Uh, so he's basically on the spectrum. Yeah, just like Denny. Dude, mm -hmm. or myself in or, our or fucking this, Spawn this, film. This fucking guy. He's for sure on the spectrum. Oh, yeah. What the fuck is up with these people? <laughs> I still, I've, to this day, do not understand who they are or why they're here. This is never mentioned in the book, so I have nothing behind about these characters. They, uh, I don't understand why, besides it's funny, maybe? They they um, they um mention later that like they come in here to like study randomly, but who keeps their door Ooh. unlocked? Oh, oh, why do a... people just come into this house and fuck? Well, okay. Well, here's the question: How old are they fucking supposed to be? I don't know. Tommy I has. Think, I think. I think college. I think it's supposed to be college. Yeah. But, but but Tommy's fifty and has a fucking career. I, I get no, Denny. No, no, his no, his body is like a twenty-one year old. What are you talking about? His face looks Just... like he was like beaten up. He looks like fucking Rocky. Why is he eating chocolate off her and not even like sexy? He literally just puts like a Hershey's kiss on her. He's like, mm, mm. no, the, the next one, she's like stuffing his face full of chocolate. Yeah, hands up. Look at his fucking face. Look mm -hmm. at this face. This reminds me of, this, I guess their only Christmas reference is the Grinch when they're just stuffing his face full of fudge. <laughs> this is also oh, like, it's a good movie. You know, everyone's like, oh, his face, it's so bad. That's my face when I get a blowjob. That's cool, man. Whoa! Well, he's making the face before Wowzers. she even gets down to his cock. Like it's just like it's yeah. it's pre. He, he's doing a premature like face ejaculation. Oh Drink my again. God. Yeah. Still haven't introduced who these people are. They're just people that came in and fucked in the house. 
He's known as the me underwears guy, and she's known as not Lisa. No, yeah. What homework? They brought in chocolates. That's about it, I think. So, so Michelle is a friend of her, and that's a mom. yeah because Lisa why confines her. Why is her, her mom later. such a cunt? Because she's got breast cancer. You <laughs> dick. We don't we don't know that yet. Wait, she has nipple like buttons. Look at look. Look at Grandma here. She got double buttons. Look at that. Damn, Ooh, Grandma. Damn. That's why she's got cancer then. Oh, here's fucking Denny. <sighs> Denny. And he's like, oh, hey, Mom. You want to fuck? Denny oh, smelt yeah. the sex and ran in there. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss it? He's a fucking mongoose. <laughs> I, s- I, s- I smell juices. Juices. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> God. Ron, do you want to uh, explain your first time watching this? Or describe it? Uh, y- mm. You're next. I guess ours are kind uh, of entangled, aren't they? Yeah, they kind of are. Okay, so uh, I'll ahead. give kind of context. Um, so one year, about 46 years ago, I think. 47 at least, years at ago. least 46 or something. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think um, the three of us did actual birthday gifts like we do every year. And uh, I, Ron, I gave you the room for your uh, for Christmas, actually. And, but you didn't want to watch it. You ended up leaving. So Shay and I watched it on repeat. <laughs> so I had to go spend time with my now wife for, for, for Christmas and it wasn't birthday gifts. It was Christmas gifts. And I couldn't watch it. So Shane gave it to me as like, here, this is a great movie. I'm like, I've never seen this shit. Why would I care? <laughs> so I left and then I, and I come back and you guys are watching it like a third time. <laughs> and you're just sitting there still watching the same movie. Uh, drunk and as so, fuck. So then, so then, so then I finally sit down. And I, I go, "What is this movie?" And then you guys are giggling your asses off, drinking, watching this movie, drinking scotchkas, and I don't, and I'm, I'm like miserable, watching this movie. It's just like, what is this? Yeah. And then from there, we, I think that like December, we end up watching yeah. it like a dozen times because we showed it to all of our group group of friends. So, so if you, oh, drink again, God damn. drink, yay! I love this one. So, so what ended up happening was we saw this and we're doing some research and we said, well, let's get some friends. It was like, what, eight of us together? And we showed it God, to them yeah. and we were all sitting there baffling, baffled. And I just was sitting there on IMDb reading about this movie because I was fascinated. Like, what the fuck is this? And I was sitting there just getting mad about all the money burnt of this movie. <laughs> I it's love this scene. So Denny owes this drug dealer money. For drugs he already did. And he's like... Where's my fucking money? He's like, oh, yo, this is the weird thing. He's like, it's coming right now. He's like, where's the money? I'm like, it's almost here. I'm sorry. Oh, my like, God. It's going to be here in a second. Oh, my God. And, he, and then this guy's name name is Chris-R. R. Yep. Chris R. Yeah. And Chris R. So, oh, um, wow. so watch out, Denny. Aaron Rodgers here is not vaccinated. <laughs> He's immunized, though, Ron. Yeah. You know, I'll give it to this drug dealer. He's... He's trying. He's notoriously known as the only person acting, and apparently they were. Denny was actually afraid for his life of this guy because this guy came in like full throttle. Awesome. Oh, uh, s- s- speaking of which, Dan and I—they're <laughs> <laughs> just screaming. I love it. Somebody help! <laughs> they're just screaming. Somebody right? hit someone. Mark should have shot him. Just yeah, fucker. That's what you want to do? You want to do bang? Like, right the in Mark's the head. got a twelve gauge. Like. <laughs> You know what? I'll give Tommy this. They had to set up the gun. Oh, okay. Uh, That's yeah. the setup. That's because in the in the original, is that one of my things? Hold on. Is that one of my things? In the original script, Tommy was gonna like find the gun and break it open from a lockbox. But I think this is actually a setup. So I think someone's so they had to wow. set it up. Are, are, are you sure, or it's just like another random That would be the only had. thing are in this sure? that was set are up sure? and paid off. That's not 100%. This is me drinking, just uh, analyzing this. Oh, okay. Later when it comes but, back, let's look at it and see if it's actually the same gun. Probably is, because oh, we're cheap. Not. <laughs> no, they, had the, they used the same gun. Yeah, but you know what? It, yeah, let's, let's give it to him. He gets one thing for this film. Dude, I love this scene. This scene's because they're just screaming at him. They're just shouting and, at Denny, yeah. and Grandma doesn't know who Denny is, and he is just taking it. Yeah. I got some trivia for you. Ronnie will get it right. Danny will be the one that we'll see. Okay. Johnny shot this in two different uh on two different cameras. Thirty five millimeter and high definition video. This that, is because is... Johnny doesn't know the difference between the formats. 
Yes, that is true. He said that in the interview at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I'm like, oh my god. He bought two different cameras Bro- and shot it at the same time. You're not it my fucking ex- mother. Uh, yeah, he is very proud about using two cameras. Uh, I'll, get that that I'll get to that in yeah, a second. I'll get to that in a second here. Very, very ca- proud. Does this, does this green screen count as San Francisco skyline? Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. <laughs> By the way, that's fucking Alcatraz. You can't see Alcatraz that goddamn close from an apartment building. <laughs> Well, isn't Alcatraz, like, t- more towards the Golden Gate, too? Why is the Golden Gate over there and Alcatraz is over there? It's, uh, it's it almost... depends on if, if you believe in the flat Earth or not there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So this all this all checks out, then. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's a... Yeah. Where, oh, there's, a the, there's, the, there's the ice wall. Okay. There we go. Okay, here's here's my two truths why it's so, because since you mentioned it. Okay, which of the following is untrue about the filming of the room? Number one... Tommy spent a million dollars on buying, not renting, film equipment and shot the film simultaneously in HD and 35mm because, quote-unquote, he wanted to be the first. Number two, he spent $6,000 on a private bathroom in the middle of the set for himself. And three, the room made $500 its opening weekend. I'm going to say the last one's false because yeah, I bet it made one. less because all those other two, I think, well, one I know is true, but the bathroom one, that sounds right up Tommy's alley. <laughs> Wait, what year was this again? Right? And I don't get it. That's not weird. If I'm a director, I'm going to build my own private bathroom too. Fuck all you dirty I think it's 2001. Robos. I didn't do any research for this. Oh, 2001. 500 bucks. I'd say, I'd say three is false. You're both correct. Want to guess how much money? This is the scene. Hold on, this is the scene. Oh, I did yeah. not. Oh, is that? Oh, I'm sorry. We, we missed the scene right there. Oh, I know. We're, Drink it doesn't shame. introduce that he hit her, and he just walks in and goes, I didn't hit her. Drink shame. I did not. Uh, I did not. Okay, so the guess how much money the room made its opening weekend. Because you're, you're right. It's not $500. Guess how much you made it. Oh, I bet you it's less. Forty-seven dollars. <laughs> oh my god! I would who, say like two two seventy-five. Okay, eighteen hundred dollars was it's actually made for opening weekend. Wow. wow! I'm sure most of it was wow. Tommy buying out the the theaters. And That's the true. Yeah. Where does he get all his fucking money? We can I get that in a little bit, but this is when the the movie starts getting interesting to me. On like a writing level. The first 30, 40, first, is it we halfway done already? The first 40 oh. minutes is sex scenes and nonsense. But now this is fascinating about how they characterize Lisa as just being an absolute scrunt. And then they just kind of build it up <laughs> more. Yeah. It's like, it's so misogynistic. It's beautiful. It's just a perfect symphony of that Tommy Wiseau does not understand women or anything else. But women's <laughs> especially. I don't, I, I, he's got mommy issues and probably, yeah, other, he's probably got women issues, I bet. That he... guy? Tommy Fox. <laughs> uh, yeah, with his right hand or left hand. <laughs> Tommy, okay, so there's a whole chapter of the room dedicated to, like, Greg. He, Greg takes, like, some of his Tommy's short stories and films, scripts he's writing, and kind of pieces together the reality of Tommy, but it's, it's, it's like, very speculative. But Tommy grew up in, like, a very abusive home in the USSR, tried to escape it, got to France was kind of thrown around in France and not respected. Then eventually made it his way to Louisiana, which he says he's born and raised from. And then he was struggling to make money. He had an uncle that was abusive. And then finally made his way to San Francisco to like make it as an actor. And supposedly he's made his money buying property and in fashion. That's like a very speculative based upon Greg Sestero's kind of time with him. Hmm. So USSR, his accent is more like Estonia for my uh, <laughs> linguistics classes down uh, under the bridge. You know, I think he's uh, I think he's Siberian. I don't know for sure though. Mm. He's a Louisiana Siberian. Yeah, that explains everything. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know what I noticed right here that I never noticed before? It only happens on Denny. Denny's face has a very fun green yeah, hint it's... to it on the outline because because this is obviously all done on green screen on top of a fake top of a building. Oh my god. It's because Denny's also an alien. <laughs> oh my god. He's got a big old head. He looks so, like Johnny Gil- He okay. looks like Brad Dorf and Johnny Galecki from like the Big Bang Theory and Roseanne. Okay, so just 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 wait a minute. So 
we started off with Johnny. This scene also drink started, the skyline. Which, which Johnny hasn't oh, hit no. Lisa, right? Johnny never hit Lisa. Yes. And then Greg was contemplating football. Yep. And then they move on. Uh, Greg also Greg also talks about how women are crazy, right? Right. Yeah. And then oh, what a story. <laughs> um. And oh, and then Denny now Denny, says, "I'm in love with Lisa" to the guy who is supposedly engaged to her. God, look at his face. It this is ridiculous. Out. I can't take it anymore. God. <laughs> he looks like Mickey Rourke post boxing and like uh and like facial reconstruction. Ugh. This is so teeth? bad. He does look like Mickey Rourke's reconstruction. What's he have in his uh, pants pockets? It looks like he's got change. Like that is a that is a huge talking point in the um, the book that Tommy has everything in his pockets like a toddler. Yeah. He just has everything in there. Like he's got like he's a he's like he's a magician. He's got a bunch of like uh, like flags in there. What do you call it? Yeah. I think I think I don't know. If it makes sense, and I don't think it does in the book. But if you notice Tommy's clothes are really baggy. I think he thinks it's popular, at the time. <laughs> I, this, this is filming in the late 90s because because greg sestero oh drink again because greg mentions uh, the phantom menace so it took like two years to finally get this done so i think like late 90s he thinks like baggy closes in i thought you were gonna say tommy was gonna make his own star wars um, do you think everybody in the cast showed up to the premiere oh they they all did um it's oh, very confusing God. because Tommy fired a lot of crew members. <laughs> and actually, the night before they started filming, um, Tommy asks Greg to be the mark. So so through the first month of filming, Tommy slowly starts giving the, the original mark less and less to do. And eventually, oh. he gets the hint that he's not supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm telling oh you, God. like... I hate the room, but the Desert Artist is a good read or a good listen. But not the movie. Yeah. No, let's let's talk about the Disaster Artist. That movie is the worst thing. I'd prefer to watch this again over that film because that movie tries to justify James Franco and friends making fun of the room with some bullshit ending about you did your best, Tommy. Yeah, that, and then the Franco brothers, both of them should not be in it. Dave, Dave Franco should Dave Franco should not have been in it as much. Oh yeah, he sucks. He sucks. <laughs> J, James Franco does a good impression of Tommy Wiseau. It's pretty spot on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree in that. But yeah, Dave Franco like, when he wasn't f-ing girls. <laughs> what? Cut that. Oh, cut that. Nope. Keeping it in. Cut it. Um, <laughs> just keeping it in. Um, Shane got canceled before I did. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's Tommy strolling through. Now starts Tommy's, like, his paranoia. I haven't seen Dave Franco in anything that I liked watching him on screen. I was like, get out of here, dude. He he just looks, he looks confused. He, he looks like he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing ever. Asshole. I, I didn't mind him in 21 Jump Street. I was going to say, like, that popped in my head yeah. right now, like, he plays a, an asshole kind of jock guy pretty fine. Yeah, so I'm like, I didn't mind him in that. He, he That was good casting for him. So, mm-hmm. but other than that, nothing at all. But no, if you never... The disaster artist is like just the Franco brothers jerking themselves off and making fun of the room and then trying to justify spending millions of dollars making fun of the room. It is in no way interesting, but I'd prefer to watch this over that. But the book, recommend the book though, because the book and the movie have nothing to do with each other. It's based, quote unquote, on the book, but there's no connection at all. Hmm. Hmm. So the book's a girl talk. What were they talking about? about? Now, here, here we go. Here comes the scene. Here's the scene. I'm excited for this. I never hit you. Okay, what I never you hit you. Oh, I never God. hit you. You shouldn't have any secrets from me. What the? F- does that mean he hit her? Like, what does that mean? Well, they never say where, and then like, where are the bruises? I'm confused. Is like, who did he, who did she tell? Like, just their friends? So he used to defend himself to the friends or the cops? Like, the cops were on call. But who then, cares? But- Oh, oh, uh oh. Oh my he's, god, he hit her. He's getting physical. Wow. Oh my god, you asshole. But who told him that that she said that he hit her? How do you find out? Here we go, boys. This is this is deep. <laughs> uh oh. 
Yeah. It's everything <laughs> about Lisa. And the Oscar goes to Dave Franco for his part in Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> Now, Dave Franco, you're tearing me apart. <laughs> I love how they're going up and down. They're sitting up and they sit, stand up, they sit down, stand up, sit down. It's like a up, goddamn up. Catholic mass. <laughs> <laughs> so Tommy spent top dollar buying like legitimate production and crew. And they just mm-hmm. constantly kept telling him how to make a movie. And he kept fighting with them. Shrink. Hello, Skyline. Oh. So the entire time they're telling him, like, like Tommy, hit your mark, hit your mark. He kept getting out of frame, so it takes so many times. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Shane, talk about your um, your, your dear friend's football. Oh, I actually know a celebrity, my friend, who is a chemist. That's all I'll give you about him. He also That's might cool. be a Chechenian terrorist, but also um, might be doing Breaking Bad shit. Yeah, he also may be cooking up meth. Um, he got a football signed by Tommy Wiseau. He went to a viewing randomly in New York, uh, like some random theater that just shows this like as a joke every week, like a Tuesday night, Mm -hmm. the room night kind of thing. And he showed up and Tommy Wiseau was there and he got to throw a football with him and Tommy signed the football. That's awesome. That's yeah. just wonderful. Like, that's worth more money than Tom Brady signing a football. <laughs> it is that's... if you have, you know, mental problems. <laughs> <laughs> you could either have the greatest quarterback in history sign your football or the most impressive filmmaker of all time. <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. an alien. No, no, or the greatest quarterback of all time and then Tom Brady. <laughs> and then Tom Brady. <laughs> Brett Favre. <laughs> Brett Favre. No, the only thing I have signed by Brett Favre is one of his cock photos. <laughs> it's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> Holy, you, would, you wouldn't know it was his unless he signed the picture. That's why I had him sign it. Holy Crocs, Batman. <laughs> what are they talking about? They're talking about women. That's all they talk about because men oh. talk about women all the time. Jesus! Oh my supposedly, god! Supposedly, this was actually real. He actually tripped and fell, or fell, according to his interview. Why did he knock him over? Um, I don't know, but it's a hate crime because they attack Lance Bass like that. Not oh. Lance Bass. He's gay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> We're live on the scene there, the hate crime with Dan, the reporter. <laughs> Where's San Francisco, Ron? Where I get some gay bashings going on. Where the kissy Christines of Claws also knows the KKK have pushed a gay Lance Bass to the ground. <laughs> and so for some reason, it's put, they're playing football in a garage. We have, apparently, Mooseport has enlisted the services of the Violator to help bring justice back to... Oh uh, my, God. there's so many references my brain's spinning. Yeah. Oh my god. Wait, the, the, wait, does, does Grandma have cancer yet? Yeah, she does. Yeah. All right. Okay. True or false? The film editor, who Tommy Wiseau paid top dollar for, originally cut shots, shots of his naked buttocks, stating, they scared my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know the answer uh, to that, so. Uh, you go after Danny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go true. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, really? said, he said it scared his wife to see his butt, so he couldn't put the film. That's in the book. That's in the book. <laughs> Tommy, just... your wife is your butt is scary. <laughs> <laughs> your butt is scaring us apart. <laughs> Tommy, I can't have it in the film. It's terrifying. Women aren't gonna see this. <laughs> That USSR Louisiana butt crack scaring everybody. You look like if someone shaved Bigfoot. <laughs> you look like a chupacabra with long hair. <laughs> Are there other mythical beasts I could compare you to? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, one another two truths and why so? Yes. Uh, I keep losing these, Jesus. Okay. Alright. Okay, uh, Greg has described Tommy as all the following except these. Number one, has heart. Is sad and a blind artistic courage. Has thought Tommy was the Zodiac killer, and is a combination of Nosferatu and Jean-Claude Van Damme. 
He's definitely said the Nosferatu Van Damme thing. I'm going to go one is false. Yeah, because I do think he probably thought he was the Zodiac Killer at some <laughs> point. <laughs> you were both wrong. Number three was incorrect. I made that one up. The Nosferatu. Oh, Van Damme. Well, that's Van a good one. Cause you, Shane, really you is. dumbass. <laughs> oh, Danny, drink. Ah! Oh, drink, right? Danny. That's it? Yeah, Danny, drink. <laughs> Sorry, I, insult Shane. I should have no, waited. Was, I'm sorry. It was you I sh- called me a dumbass. Oh. <laughs> I should have waited. Fair I'm, thing. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shane. I should have waited longer. But yeah, yeah, that was it. I thought it was gonna be a ferret thing. I was gonna mention a ferret at some point. And see if that was it. I thought yeah. about it, but I knew your power to insult me was too strong. Yeah. So, um, okay. so Greg in the very first chapter described Tommy as having heart, the sad and blind artistic courage, uh-huh. which is why he acted with him in their acting class. Mm-hmm. He legitimately thought Tommy was a Zodiac killer at one point because um, there was Zodiac signs all over Tommy's apartment. Oh, God. Oh, my God. And Tommy was like, what does that mean? I don't know. And and Greg was like, that's a Zodiac sign. So Tommy acted like he didn't know what it was. But I made up the Nosferatu and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Tommy would like have all the Zodiac killer stuff and not know that it was the Zodiac <laughs> killer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, He's like, I just thought the art was so cool. Well, remember, though, like... They met in San Francisco. Mm. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah. when the Zodiac, like, that was the biggest fear was in San Francisco at the time. Didn't they actually catch that cocksucker? No. Um, they, I thought they did. They got, like, DNA or something. No, they didn't catch him. They didn't um, catch him. Uh, he was dead. But in oh, the, in the, they figured In the Robert Graysmith, then. like, book, he says this is the person, I think the person he suspected. Years later, they had like a small match on DNA, but I don't know more beyond oh, the. Oh, and then the recently they they just said they they think they know some independent investigators uh, figured out who the person is, but he died like two years ago. Yeah, yeah, Je- Je- yeah, yeah, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish our judge, our like justice system, would be more like you. Even in death, you can't escape it. Like we bring a psychic, <laughs> we bring like a psychic to talk to the spirit. <laughs> Into the courtroom, and then also, like, bring the dead corpse, like, rotting, and just put it on the defense stand. <laughs> just, oh, my God. <laughs> and just, like, fucking Brooklyn Psychic is there, just like, so, he says he didn't kill him. Okay, so, this is another scene where there's three guys together, and they talk about women and not understanding them. And this guy fucking apparently Joe is some Buck. psychiatrist. Yes. With Joe Buck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What a pass. Dan's favorite sports commentator is, is Joe, Joe Buck. Buck. It really you know is Joe Buck. You know what's you know better than Joe Buck? Mm. Everybody. <laughs> Chris Collinsworth. Yeah, I like Chris Collinsworth. Fuck off. I fucking hate Chris Collinsworth, and it's not his fault. I played Madden, uh, what was the year he did? Like 2008 or something? The and fuck? the game cheats. <laughs> the game fucking you, cheats. Oh my god. And, like... It'll intercept your passes or you'll fumble and just shit that is just bullshit that you have no control over. And he'll be like, wow, what a stupid play by the player. (laughs) What a dumb pass. There was no one there. And you're like, fuck you, Chris. Fuck you. (laughs) It's a fucking video game, you cocksucker. (laughs) Okay, so remember this character right here. I think his name is Peter, right? Joe Buck. Mm -hmm. Joe Buck, a.k.a. Peter. Remember him because, because later... He will come back as a different actor. No, you don't remember. You don't know this. Okay, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But um, <laughs> the cheap, 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 cheap. Yeah, the cheap, 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 cheap. But um, uh, but right there, Joe Buck keeps standing up and has like this weird lighting on his face. Like you keep noticing, no. he keeps standing up and has the light directly on his face. But it looks like he's trying to fart or ask the. Oh fart. God! It's yeah, he's right at him. At him. He's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta fart in this fireplace real quick. And uh, and so this actor, I don't remember his name now, but he told Tommy distinctively, hey, I'll be in the movie. I'm excited, but I have another obligation after I think the original filming was six months. And it obviously went way longer than intended. <laughs> so this guy finally said, I'm not showing up to work anymore. And then Tommy basically, quote unquote, fired him, even though this contract was already up, but he fired him. <laughs> and then he gets recasted later and you'll figure oh. out who that is. Gotcha. I thought um, you. I thought you meant that like he's he plays he plays a different character later. I'm like, wait, what? No, yeah, okay, his yeah, role is played by a different is. actor. Gotcha. Yeah, that I remember. I'm like, oh, who's he? I'm like, who's he later on? I'm trying to think. Okay. Yeah. What, what what is 
what is this story? So he just said I had to go to the YMCA where I had oh a $2,000 check, but I couldn't cash it because it was an out-of-state bank. Yeah. And then I saw Lisa. She was so beautiful drinking coffee. Like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. All the, what? All the dialogue, <laughs> obviously everyone was saying, this doesn't make any sense, and they just kept doing it. Oh, this is awesome. These little close-ups. Oh, she's Dang. so scary. Jenny! Where did he come from? She just <laughs> gave Denny a hand job in the parking lot. Give him a break. <laughs> Don't do drugs, Denny. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Denny's like a puppy, like, you know, g- g- like like a- getting his first erection. So Lisa's like, okay, I'll give you one and then calm down. <laughs> she has no one, character one other two, than... One eye and two legs. Fucks everybody. <laughs> Stop pumping, Denny. Denny. Spray bottle. No, bad, bad. Ew, get out of here with your moles, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> You have furniture. Sit down. <laughs> no, that's Denny's corner. It's <laughs> <Denny's> pee corner. <laughs> Denny, off the furniture. <laughs> There's a reason why they're doing this. I can't remember it, but Greg yeah, talks about I, this. There's a reason why. Like yeah. I think because they set up all the, the shots and they didn't walk over and they said they couldn't rearrange the shot. I can't remember what it was, but it's something with the the blocking oh. was fucked up. It was something with the it, the the room's actually small and the furniture they had to push to one side and they yes. couldn't do it or something like that. Yes. I yeah, know, you're yeah. you're right. Something about the the room was too small. I can't remember what. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the room was too small. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Wait, this is where he wants to kill What the fuck? He Hold wants on. to kill Greg Pete. went out the other door. What the fuck? Yeah, um, exactly. Mark, sorry, Mark, Greg, whenever. Oh, this behind. is when um, Greg get or Mark gets a uh, marijuana Bark? rage or uh, what? Reefer madness. There we go. Reefer madness. Reefer. Joe Buck's like, all right, and, and Joe Buck, I do feel bad for me. He's just he's just like, hey, you asked for my help. I'm just uh, I'm just asking for like uh, see if I could help you, and he then fucking just rages on him, almost like wants to throw him off the building. Do you think? Do you think that's his drugs, or the drug dealer just left his drugs up there after he was taken by gunpoint? I bet I you he know. got it from somebody in the alley, and it's just like gra- just literally just grass. <laughs> it's literally just like August bluegrass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the finest oregano in the Italian market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, drink it's by the way, the skylines in the background. Oh, oh my god, this is a long fucking movie. No, it just feels long. It's why I hate this movie. It's not. It's like it's funny for thirty minutes, and then I get really tired of it. And now he's got reefer madness. Mm-mm. Throw him off the roof. Do it. Not, you won't be no more in Fox Sports. Thank God. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> we should have listened to country music instead of watching this fucking film. No, no. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Cause I don't know. I'm drunk. Is it is it that is it called a Colt Tower? That thing in the background right there. Is it supposed to be a fire nozzle or some shit? Whatever. It keeps get, it keeps getting farther and farther away. It's a car. Oh. It's it's because <laughs> it's because it's just like a B roll that they throw in the background. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just because the Earth's moving. Mark, think, please don't smoke so much weed. <laughs> do you think Tommy got mad about Mark destroying his table he bought? Mark, that table's not free. <laughs> <laughs> That was six thirty-five. <laughs> That's a fun point of contention in the in the behind the scenes of filming. Is Tommy would burn all that money on film equipment, obviously because you're supposed to rent film equipment, not right. buy it, because it's literally like you know Super outdated expensive. as soon as you buy it. Yeah. So then, so but but then he refused to pay crew members all the time and wouldn't give them any money at all, and he wouldn't oh buy anything God. because Greg is actually a line producer. If you don't know uh-huh. what that is, it's basically you do everything behind the scenes, get people going, and like, like you know, like this is your line, your cue, get them ready to go. And Tommy Jerk refused, refused to buy a line producer. That's why one of the three cinematographers quit because they're like, you need a line producer. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. We'll do it live. Exactly. <laughs> Drink. What an incredible, <sighs> like that people just kept showing up, even though they weren't being paid. Well, they would. Greatness. What would happen is Tommy would fire a person on staff right. and that would cause an uproar. And they would say, like, oh, pay me my final check. And he says, there's no money. There's no money at all. And then they'd be like, wait, there's no money. They'd all freak out. And Tommy would calm them down. 
and then eventually spend the entire filming day signing checks. <laughs> oh, oh and that was a point of contention, too. Tommy made Greg oh shave. What? Yeah. So he could so he could call him a baby face? Yeah. He um <laughs> I think it was a power oh. move, but a Greg was pissed. Absolutely pissed about it. And he was like almost quit the room for it, but like Tommy it like required him to shave. And I jumping into this, I guess he overpaid Greg for everything and prom and bought him a car just to do all this stuff. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh my god. And then what the scene is. I wonderful. still want to know what chicken they met that went goes cheap, 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 cheap. That's that's the chickens and the USS USSR. Shane. Oh god, they just killed Pete. Do they just add drama because he fell? I like how he yeah. fell, and everyone goes over to like pick him up, but Denny gets into butt fucking position. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're assuming the position there, Joe. Like, god damn it, Denny, help me up! Don't butt fuck me. <laughs> yeah. Drink, <laughs> drink. Mm. We're not even using Shane's like drinking game. Oh, we're not. Oh, oh my god, we have not even doing that one. Drink again. Uh, it's happened. Yeah, because because this one's gonna have enough. Trust me. Oh, d- Johnny's got his secret agent glasses on. So that was. I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, the, the cheap, cheap, cheap thing. That's legitimately how Tommy thinks chickens talk, mm-hmm. or make sounds. Cluck. Oh my god, it's wonderful. So yeah, in, in the book, Greg Sestero does a really good impression of Tommy Wiseau, and he and like there's a, there's a moment when um, Tommy's like um, like uh, chastising Greg and goes cheap, cheap, cheap. So it's a legitimate thing that he does. Oh my god, this wow. is the greatest like change in like topic ever. What the scene right? Here. So it is the greatest thing in the history. So Greg and Tommy are friends, or were? Were? Oh wait, in real life? Yeah. Oh, so you don't know the yeah. whole story? Not fully. I only know what was kind of presented in the Disaster Artist. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll go over it in a second here. But um, what I actually give another point to Tommy and at least the editors is Greg's face is shaved, so they actually like could actually piece this together <laughs> and actually like oh in order. Oh my god! Yeah. I'm actually impressed by that because I. Yeah, they kept that in order. Yeah. Because no, last night I got it. about 40 minutes in and I stopped watching because I couldn't do this by myself. So props to you, Dan. You're the true preparer for this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Professional. The backstory, which is the Disaster Artist <laughs> does cover, is they met in an acting class and Greg wanted to act with Tommy because he was fearless because Greg was kind of afraid and kind of, you know, very naive and afraid of actually acting. And then, like, they became friends for a span of, like, I think it's two years before the room. And they kept in contact. And it was very kind of, like, um, kind of, like, symbiotic in the idea. Like, you know, Tommy would give Greg money, let him stay at his apartment in L.A., rent-free. But then, and then Greg would kind of give Tommy some hints on how to get movie roles. So they were actually friends. But then Greg was afraid mm-hmm. for his life. So... They're both parasites, Wait, basically. Greg was afraid for his life by Tommy? Yeah, there was one point where they got into an argument and they got in the car and Tommy was, like, driving his car, like, 80 miles per hour down, like, Rodeo or or, or on, on Maholan Drive and was, like, swerving. And then, like, they broke up and then they slowly became friends. But it seems like Greg feels bad for Tommy and Greg is, only t- friend, oh. is Tommy's only real friend. Oh. Interesting. Wow. I'm also just watching them fuck again. I was going to say that too. I forgot the, the, the sex scene again. Uh, there's God. another one just... So everyone gets two to three? Except Denny? <laughs> yes. Denny just Denny's, watches. Denny sells the sheets afterwards. That's what he yeah. gets. <laughs> oh yeah, he puts his penis in like the, the pillows. Here's the thing that wasn't and... mentioned I'm just noticing now is like Lisa's not naked with Greg, just with Tommy. You're oh, right. Yeah. At least not if you're yet. being honest, I if you're being honest, I forgot about the sex scene, so I did not account for oh, this. Oh, never mind. I'm wrong. There goes that wrong. one. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, does, she does have great personality. <laughs> I was gonna wait for you. That should have been a drinking game there, Dan. Too. Sure. I know. Everything talks about someone's tits. Ron isn't. Ron isn't drank though either. 
I'm, yeah. I I want to know what my thing is, so I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to do my usual stuff here. Wait, okay. what is yours? That's oh much. yeah, I think I haven't really. I've. I think I. I don't think you've done it really. I don't know. Here, um, we're not. Oh, uh, I know. It. Yeah. It... <laughs> I'm sure it's he's hard done to tell though. Once. Okay. One, two truths, one my zo. Yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. Okay. According to Greg, Tommy would do the following when they were outside the filming. He would order a glass of hot water every meal. He would yell at a waiter if they offered him alcohol. And Tommy would tip $5 on a $500 bill. Oh, God. I don't see him spending 500 bucks at, at a dinner. That's the thing. I do. Jesus, this is this is graphic. I would do the... It's, oh it's God, pretty Jesus. violent. He's, he's definitely going primate on her. Well, and it's like, the fucking, you know, movie fucking needs to be a little not real. This, like, is a little too, like... No, well, it is. It, it's, it's like Greg was told to have sex, and he's, like, literally having sex. Yeah. While, like, movie movies is a little more, like, romanticized, for lack of a better word. Yeah. I don't want to just see two people dry humping. All right. Um, okay, like said, so I'm going to say primate. the Drink. first one is false. Okay. Yeah, we do the alcohol. Dan is correct. <laughs> uh, he would not yell at waiters for alcohol. That's <laughs> Tommy doesn't like alcohol, but that's not a thing. Mm. Every meal, Tommy would order to drink a hot glass of water. Not tea, hot glass of water. Okay. And he would only tip $5 on any bill. Whether it was $100, $10, oh my God. $500. What a he would monster. burn money. Tommy would only eat like one meal a day. So they'd go out and just he would eat everything. On the menu, just order it, kind of, like, kind of like a baller move, basically, and then just give five dollars, no matter what. Oh my Jesus. god, what a monster! By the way, whose outfits more worse of these two? Fucking Greg with the Greg, Greg with the fucking visor or the I, gloves? I like how Tommy put on gloves for this. Like he's gonna go try out for the fucking Patriots. Where'd the visor <laughs> go? I'm gonna go visor because visor's 100 percent the worst. Like, well, now it's sense. gone. What is the fuck? They're using it as a football. Oh yeah, we're uh, friends. See, oh yeah, run around uh-huh. the ball. Uh-huh. <laughs> work, man. So behind the scenes, um, the very last filming on the room was Greg, oh, Tommy, and two crew members drink again. God damn it! Uh. <laughs> this is all shot in L.A. So that part was actually shot in Cisco, and they went to Cisco. The four of them, and they legitimately went to Golden Gate Park, and were just screwing around and playing this. And Tommy legitimately out of anger tackled greg right there oh oh really yeah yeah because tommy can't throw a football properly and greg is oh you know, really an average american <laughs> yes yeah. <Dan. laughs> yeah no surprise right and then yeah, um, so greg kept throwing shot. at him and tommy kept dropping in it was getting on camera so finally he threw it tommy got mad and he oh <laughs> she just took her shirt god bless america <laughs> oh this god is we can't so stop yes. fucking <laughs> so, so out of anger, Tommy legitimately tackled Greg. God damn it! Camera. Like a true Louisiana Russian. I feel so bad for her. She just had a, she did all this. Everyone makes fun of her, but she's no worse than anyone else in this scene for acting. No, she's just naked. Yeah, but like <laughs> she did all naked. of it, and she does it like smiling the entire time. I'm like props to her. Yeah, yeah, she's a professional, of course, right? Why would you say that? Ah, And here's her friend who's like, what's going on? But Johnny is incredible. Johnny's the best. Johnny, I mean, Mark XYZ. uh, Oh, God. Examine your zipper. Oh, my God. We're drinking out of shame. Cheers, gentlemen. Merry holidays. This is the Cheers. worst Christmas ever. Choice Soldiers is better than this. Mm-hmm. Watching a live abortion is better than this. Wasn't Toy Soldiers not during Christmas? Yeah. That's the whole point, stupid. Oh. God. Next next Christmas we'll watch Born on the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to the podcast where Shane doesn't pay attention to the podcast. <laughs> That's a big loaf of bread. Did you see that fucking bread? 
They always have apples there. I just noticed that uh, this past watch. Always have apples on the table. He's very healthy. Shane has an affinity for bread, so he only cares about bread because he eats on this goddamn podcast all day. I love bread, but bread hates that me. That was a legitimate like bet. Like, oh yeah, what's he gonna like? Where he's gonna, when he's gonna start eating, or he's gonna eat? You right shut tomorrow. your mouth. Some of us have, to, <laughs> don't have a lot of time in Dana, the day. Dana and I were literally texting last night or two nights ago, saying like, should we do a side bet on when Shane starts eating? How <laughs> yeah, eating I the know, podcast. Right? <laughs> and it was so quick before, like, as we were preparing. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Drink, you cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, Dan drink. You're right. <laughs> That's a good one though. Your right. point of view is so different than mine. Shane and I have a complicated relationship, but uh, him and I bonded over him and I bonded over watching this together. This is true. A lot, a lot of relationship. Look at that fucking bread. What is that? <laughs> is it because it's phallic there, Shane? Is that why? Yeah, what kind of phallus are you looking at? <laughs> Where is she putting that food? What? Oh, I know. Why are we unpacking this in the living room? That's uh, that's that's Denny's bread. <laughs> she throws it on the floor like, like yeah. feeding ducks. Lisa, do you have my bread? Okay, why did she unpack groceries on that table? Why are they? What's a drink? What's a Tommy and like pillow fighting? Because he always wanted to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I bet, this is, I bet this Tommy's is, actually kind of in shape. He is. Want to hear a fun story? Yeah. 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 This is a fun story with from the book that made me laugh. So so Greg was in L.A. Tommy was in San Francisco. Drink again. God damn it. I'm oh, so happy I chose God. this one. God. Dan, you son of a bitch. Okay. So, so uh, Tommy begs Greg to come see him during, I think, Thanksgiving. So Greg comes down to see his family, then sees Tommy. Tommy tricks him into a 10K marathon. Greg doesn't know, shows up Drink in again. jeans and flip-flops, and then Tommy <gasps> like coerces him into doing it to make him feel bad. So Greg walks an entire like 5 or 10K in flip-flops, and Tommy wins and goes, you didn't make it, I beat you, and just like mocks oh him for God. doing it. <laughs> That's crazy. Sounds like something I'd do to you. That's exactly <laughs> what you would do to me. Drink again. <laughs> Look how yeah, slow that's, you are. This is where it gets very bad, gentlemen. Mm. Mm. Oh, no. It's like the editor. Right. I don't know. This is just me speculating. This is not from the book. The editor was like, I'm bored. Just cutting in like Skyline <laughs> shit. He's like, this movie is 12 minutes long. I got to do Ellen- something. When did Ellen get casted in this movie? Oh. oh. I gotcha, bitch. Gotcha. <laughs> I'll get you, bitch. <laughs> hey, so I'm getting bored. So we haven't really hashed this out yet. And since the year is ending, Shane's very mad that, that Dan and I have been doing podcasts solo. So we should do a Highlander moment right now. Oh, yeah. We want to fucking talk about this. Just if do I it. Do, fucking go. Oh, no. Is, is, is this a therapy With session? Your fucking doing Dexter it. cast. <laughs> bitches. Dexter sucks. I said you it. You suck, Shane. You Drink watch in. some fucking movie. How many times can he kill somebody and hide the body? A lot. Apparently 125 times. <laughs> While well, I was trapped in the goddamn South American jungle. <laughs> Guantan- Guantanamo Bay. I had to Fucking... watch Tomorrow War by myself. I had to talk about the Ghostbusters by myself. <laughs> by the way, no one cares about that. That's got negative views. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking Dan you over here talking sucker, shit. Sucker, <laughs> Fucking Dan. <laughs> Drink Dan. Fucking through. <laughs> oh, good. I just helped you out, Ron. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> We have grown as a uh, podcasting troop here. <laughs> God damn it. The fucking Corey guy who we brought on was like, how many Drink. drugs did Shane do before doing <laughs> Ghostbusters? Okay. okay, hold on. Let's clarify. Drink, first of all. Yeah. That was my buddy Eric, who was on the Expendables podcast. Oh, you guys can okay. talk shit on him all you want to. Corey, okay, sorry. Sorry. Mm-hmm. 
Corey continually calls you an alcoholic, so talk to him. <laughs> yeah, because Shane's drunk and eats the entire time. <laughs> Disney drink. Mickey Mouse funny. Oh, also, big. Danny, you drink, you bitch. Oh, Dan, good call there. That was actually an insult that Tommy constantly does. He calls everything a Mickey Mouse. This isn't no yeah. Mickey Mouse shit. This is like real Hollywood. His yeah. his biggest insult was totally Mickey Mouse shit. Huh. Which is oh. funny because there is nothing in Hollywood that isn't owned by Mickey Mouse. Uh-huh. Ha-ha. 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 Juice! Happy holidays, Okay. Uh, how, is, is how, is, how, is, how is Mark his best friend? I don't know who his best friend is. I together. thought Denny was his best friend. Denny's his, like, <laughs> like, like, you know, child. <laughs> <laughs> Greg see, is his best friend. Denny's brain does not work. He doesn't know that. <laughs> Drink, <laughs> Drink again. <laughs> oh, dude, it's, it, it gets <laughs> intense. We're going to have some fun. It gets intense. I'm supposed to take my wife out for dinner after this. This is bad. I gotta put a bookshelf together. <laughs> <laughs> I made Son a phallus a afterwards. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Why is she? Why does she do the party still? It's ridiculous. I she think always likes to party. No offense to Julia Daniels, but she's an absolute scrunt because Tommy wrote her that way. <laughs> yeah. Fix your tie, Tommy. Tommy no. should have fucked the grandma. That would have been awesome. Just Claudette. Like, yeah. Who's that guy? That's Peter. Shout or not. Shout or not. Are you ready? All right. That's Peter. Yeah. That's not Peter. That's Peter. That's the friend That's Peter. Peter. Okay, go do your not shout Peter. or not. <clears throat> so that random guy in the credits mm-hmm. is actually given the name party member number one. True. False. Uh, it's a false. It is Steven. <laughs> Who the fuck is Steven? Who the fuck is Steven? He's played by Greg Ellery. And that's all I know. <laughs> that was, that was Why are they sure always feeding each other? Stop feeding because, each other. Because that's their thing. That's their kink. Yeah. Oh, that middle chick right there. She was trying to um, Michelle. Um, pr- give out a documentary. Like a, and it's kind of like a behind the scenes of the room. Uh-huh. Why is everybody fucking leaving? They're going like, out. They're going outside. The door is a portal, and it works Seriously. many different ways. Is it like a fucking like Rick and Morty time portal? Because yeah. when this happens, like days and pass. This, but... Oh fuck, Rick, M- Morty, we're we're in the room. <laughs> we gotta get the fuck out of here, Morty. There's there's a lot of more Nazis in here than we thought. <laughs> Whoa, damn, ass to mouth. Die, you um, commie fuck. Why so? <laughs> but that middle chick whose name I don't I think her name's Michelle, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. She's trying to produce a film about the behind the scenes of the room. Right. And Tommy keeps cutting it and won't allow it. 100% like every time they try to make it and get it produced and like get it distributed, Tommy has final say because he's in it and he refuses to yeah. let it happen and keeps killing it. Huh. Well, for the disaster artist, they had to show like Tommy's like good side quote unquote. That's why the only yeah. reason why he agreed to even do it. Yes. Really? There's Who's Steven. That, that's the Steven. fucking Peter. That's the character that's of Peter. Steven. This guy's that's the Steven. Of Peter. That's Steven. I'm telling you, that's the character of Peter because he's not a character. No, dude, I looked it up. It's Steven. So I looked it up. It's Peter Greg Ellery. Got replaced by Steven. No, no, like, no, I don't doubt that, but he's Wait, supposed leave to play the person of Steven. comments in your pocket? Dude, that's, dude, that's it, literally, they put him as Steven in the credits, and it's Greg Ellery. I swear. I'm not doubting that, but he's taking the role of oh, Peter, gotcha, though, gotcha, okay. because Peter quit the production, or a.k.a. was fired by Tommy. He's he's taking on the role of Peter, because he oh. knows what's going on what's between the two of them. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's it, okay. Who is that bitch? Michelle. That's yeah. That's that's Michelle. Lady. That's Michelle. Yeah. I thought Michelle was blonde. No, it's Michelle. She she has the the no, long Lisa's like, blonde. Like... I think I'm drunk. And then Stephen, not Peter, is a uh... <laughs> not Joe Buck. He's yeah. drunk. He's drunk as fuck. Yeah. Look at him. He came. Why is everyone straight. going outside? What's going on? Wait, oh god! To get some air. Damn it, Dan. <laughs> I hate. Oh, a Ford Taurus. 
I lost my virginity <laughs> to four doors. Shane's got car autism. Your, yeah, yeah. Then you woke up, Shane. <laughs> yeah, I'm still <sure> virgin. <laughs> drink, Shane. I drink Dan. I got married, and my I wife know, said I God did. just doesn't like sex. <laughs> <laughs> It's my kind of God. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, happy birthday, Jesus. Oh, yeah, to Jesus. Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> the original partier. The original Van Wilder. <laughs> Enjoy Shane, that, Shane, do you know the story behind Van Wilder? It's about per- Burt Kreischer. Oh, okay. So you do yeah. know. No, it's, it's, no, it's Brent Chris- Chrysler. Yeah, Brent Chrysler. Brent Crisper. Um, Burt Cri- Burt Crisper. I know. I, I didn't know that, like, that life that Burt Kreischer is who that character is based off of. Yeah. I didn't know until recently as well. Yeah. Hmm. Makes sense. I guess we're, we're getting to the closer to the end. I guess some more Tommy Wiseau or not. So ready? Yeah, let's fucking <sighs> go. Yeah. Okay. Tommy pitched all the following ideas for movies and TV shows to Mark, except which one? Number one, an all-male yeah. shower scene, including Johnny, Mark, Denny, and Paul. Number two, a movie called... No. The Vampire from Alcatraz, King of Vampires. Or number three, <laughs> Tommy pitched Johnny being a vampire in the movie as a side plot and he would drive his Mercedes off the roof of his building. Oh, no. C, C is false, yeah. I'm going to do B. You are both wrong. Oh. The fake one was the all-male shower scene. I that was when I made it. Okay. naked. Really? He even said Mercedes in it, too? Yes. Tommy wow. has an obsession with vampires, so he pitched a movie called The Vampire from Alcatraz, King of Vampires, and he wanted Johnny to be a vampire in one iteration of the script and drive his Mercedes off a building. I don't He's perfect see for a vampire. why we haven't done yes. that. I'm pretty sure that's why in the, um, the Desert Artist movie, Bill Odekirk calls him Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Why are they just yelling about her fucking around on Johnny in the middle of his birthday uh, party? But we we, <laughs> we we went past this though. Like uh, uh, Johnny uh, randomly for some reason says we're expecting, which I don't think they are. As far as we know, they're not. Yeah, so he's lied, but then no. Oh, drink. Because drama. Who are those mm-hmm. fucks? Uh, party member one and two. Actually, <laughs> did he just say Lisa looks hot tonight? Yes. Yeah, yes. Lisa looks hot to me. You know who those cans on Lisa? The guy from Office Space. (laughs) Where he's like, oh yeah, she fucked Lumberg. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so in this scene, um, I think it's Tommy. Tommy didn't want to really shove Greg, and then. Greg like pushed him and said, "Fuck you, do it." And Tommy actually shoves him and like knocks him back. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and Greg was so frustrated he pushes him back again, and it was all just like this is one of the final scenes that they filmed because they filmed it almost all in order because it's Tommy. <laughs> so, so like Ronnie, m- movies are linear. Okay, come on. Uh, uh, movie movie plots are linear. Movie filming is not linear. No, oh my filming God, of this God, is damn it, linear. Dan. The, Jesus <laughs> the filming of this is benefits linear, of actually watching it. Not. Oh my god! I think it, I think there's a lot. I think there's several more in the next like ten minutes. So now okay. they're just openly together at the party. I go back to my original theory that I think Lisa just wants Tommy to kill himself. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Wait, no, but now like he's literally, like, what's doing? her other motivation? Like, she could just break up with him and move on, but she wants him to fucking murder himself. Yeah, just fucking do it already. Jump. Now they're having another confrontation? I think, I think wait, this is the one where it. he actually pushes him. No, wait for it. There's a uh, better thing to do it. But they just had a confrontation. Wait, hold on. Are you telling me something in this movie doesn't make sense? Oh, my God. Oh. That he, one. The, he that was the real him. push. That was the real push. Oh! Oh! Kinky! All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, die for the knife. Fight him. I'm not sure we mentioned this already, but all the audio in this movie was unusable, so they all had to come back (laughs) after filming and ADR almost every single one of their lines. 
Oh, that God. is just perfect. And that is, it basically encapsulates the room, just like nothing worked out and it's all wrong. Everybody betrayed me. I'm fed up with this world. Do it. Do it. Do, do it now. Do it now. Do it. He's going to smoke himself. Disney. <laughs> ah, damn God it. Damn it. I hate you. I'm out of liquids. <laughs> no, I think I think we're I think we're in the home stretch now. I think that's I think just I think that's it. Why are they talking? Oh, cause the fucking recorder thing. That's a whole fucking thing. What? So like, yeah. so on the crew, the the original producer kept telling like Johnny or Tommy that like like that's not how tape recorders work. You can't just record every conversation. It doesn't make sense logically that you have to change the tapes every. You know, 30 minutes if you're going to record everything mm-hmm. going on here because of supposedly Johnny is recording everything in the house on the oh, phone. Oh, yeah. All the time. So so they argue and say, this is not how these things work. And Tommy insists that this is how recorders work. So anytime anyone picks up a phone. Why are there voodoo dolls? Those are actually sex dolls. Oh. Also, I, okay. I heard what you were saying. That, of course, Tommy doesn't understand how tape recorders work. Yeah. Okay, I got one last um, two truths, one my so. You ready? Uh, thank God. Okay. The following are true about the behind the scenes of the room, except what? Number one, it took three hours and 32 takes to do the oh, hi, Mark scene. Number two, on the one year anniversary of the 9 11, Tommy held a moment of silence, then chanted USA, USA, while calling Bin Laden a piece of shit. Or three, the set was entirely furnished when Tommy bought a mock bedroom set from the most expensive store on Rodeo Drive. Oh my god. Uh, um, yeah, A. You're both incorrect. <laughs> the set was entirely furnished by thrift stores. Oh, uh, shocker. So it took three hours and no 32 way. takes to do the one take for the Oh, hi, Mark scene because oh, Tommy God. couldn't meet his mark, couldn't remember his lines, which is basically how meet every scene mark. was. Uh. There you go. And then on the one year anniversary of 9 11, Tommy uh, started a fight with the crew because he fired the, uh, the original DP and all those people wanted to leave and, refu- and he refused to pay them. So he, he basically chanted USA, fuck Bin Laden, piece of shit, to get them to be on his side. Wow. <laughs> you should, you, you we want to get paid. That's what the terrorists want. Yeah. <laughs> and side note, have you ever been to San Francisco and you see the, the really big American flag in San Francisco? That's Tommy Wiseau's. He purchased the largest American flag at the time in the United States. God damn it! He, Did he do it for advertising? Because I think isn't is isn't that the rule? You can it's free to put an American flag as tall as you want for advertising purposes. It might be that, but really the um, the honest thing is Tommy is according to Greg supposedly just extremely patriotic. He really respects the freedom of USA because he's gone to difficulties and you know about time Soviet somebody Russia. does. <laughs> Fuck no, no, doesn't he realize that America sucks? A bunch of ungrateful bitches. I don't know. I didn't give my gout toes so that you all could fucking hate the flag. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'm able to get five Johnson & Johnson shots in like two months. So I'm cool with it. I think everyone should have to sign up for Spawn's Army. <laughs> no. I could do a little time. Um, This is boring because the whole scene. I have a random shot or not if you guys want to do one. Yeah. One of the producers on the film um, was dead during <laughs> the entire filming of the room. Uh, what, you mean like he killed himself? He was not alive during the entire filming of the room. True or false? That's got to be true. Tommy would have a uh, dead producer that he's paying. False. Dick Caffrey was a true friend and mentor of Tommy Wiseau and was very dead by the time the filming of the room began. So he was dedicated and produced it. And he was not alive. <laughs> what kind of yeah, guy wants that. to mentor Tommy Wiseau? Like, I don't Tommy trust that was, man. Tommy was basically homeless in San Francisco and had a very sad kind of time in there. And this guy kind of brought him in, like, told him about movies and stuff. And 
his name is Dick Caffrey, huh. and he was some guy in the business for a while and felt bad for Tommy, and then he died, and then for some reason, Tommy would use the excuse all the time of, the producers want this, producers want that, and then he was talking about a guy who was dead. <laughs> and also, Dick Caffrey sounds like a fake name, not gonna lie. It does. Yeah. It, it might have been. Dick Caffrey's not real. There we go. Playing? We're at the, uh, the No, not the apples. Thank God. Oh, oh no. come on, you, you son of a bitch. This is like a Zat like cover. This is or like the most Kane. passive kind of room tear up ever. This is this, not the TV! This looks just like Zat. <laughs> oh, he threw it through the window? That's intense. Wow. Scroll wild wild! <laughs> <laughs> Mickey drinking that one, Shane. <laughs> no, don't tear all the shelves out. No, that was from IKEA, you son of a bitch. Shoot yourself. Do it already. Uh, uh, one more titty. Uh, one more titty. Fuck her dress. Fuck her dress. Yeah. You put on the red dress. That's, one of the, that's the one. I hate this movie, but the one thing we should do at one point is go to a, a film. Um, of this, we should all go. Um, I feel like it would yeah. just irritate me, be annoying. I know all the, dr- all the people that are like, "Oh my god, we bring- yeah!" If we're, if we're all drunk and doing it, I think we it's won't. True. It's true. Just make sure we bring our spoons. All he remembers the smell of the dress, the taste See, of the dress. See, that's I never noticed was the spoons. I even to this viewing, I've never noticed the spoon picture. I, I noticed. I think I noticed one picture frame, and I think it just blown. Oh, more titties. Shane, yeah. more titties. I love the, titties. The, the whole scene was supposed to be a lot, lot longer where he actually like thrusts and straddles the dress. Jesus. Release the why so cut. <laughs> this is the why so cut because Tommy oh. was there for the entire editing process. Here's the gun. Is it the same gun? It is it's the Maddie, same right? gun. It, it is, is the exact same, same prop. I don't know if it's the same gun or just the same prop. It's probably both. Yeah. yeah. Do it. Here just we fucking go. do it. The best ending. Yes! God, God forgive, forgive me. Give me. Drink, Shane. What Look at the replica it. written on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the movie and also in the book, Tommy shoots himself and then can't hold his breath. And he keeps riling on the ground, dying. So that was like a, a real thing. So they had to like cut that because he kept just riling on the ground he can't <laughs> hold his breath what does that he, fucking mean <laughs> he was never taught properly shane that's why it's it's because like he he wants to make it more dramatic doesn't understand how any of this works he's, the sad the sad part about him he's moving is he wants the attention of being a film star but has no understanding of acting in film work so he just wants the attention it's kind of narcissistic basically well that's any good like, you know, bad movie director is a narcissist who doesn't understand anything, thinks they know everything, and just does it. That's incredible. Kiss him. Kiss him. Kiss, Kiss him. his dick. <laughs> <laughs> does he I say mean, goodnight, sweet prince? I think so. No, no, no. He's, no. I don't know. It's very Shakespeare. I don't know if he says it or not. No, he gets, like, mad at him. He's like, fuck this guy. No, 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 Fuck no, no, this no, no. guy. He gets mad at her, doesn't he? Yeah, he's like, you did this, even though his dick was No, no, he's... Her. You made my cock come inside you. Oh, yeah. I still have you. You don't have me. You never did. Oh, I thought it was... I interpreted it as different. I thought he was mad at me. Yeah. No, he's mad at her because they put all the blame on the woman. They all put all the blame on Lisa. This is the most misogynist movie ever oh made. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I forgot. To, I didn't read one part of the on the box. Forgot. Women... Blame them for everything. Oh! Okay. <laughs> well, that, yeah, we're well, right. cool. She's like, you're in my house! No, Denny, don't fuck oh, it! There don't is. fuck oh, it, Denny! Not... No, Denny, come <laughs> off of it! Turn him over! I got him! Turn him over! <laughs> Denny, like stop! Aunt... <laughs> Denny, off! Don't take his pants. Denny, don't take his pants off, no! <laughs> He's like an anteater to a hill of ants. I want in there! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's still fresh. So I have a wasted potential exclusive. Are you ready, boys? Do it. Greg Sestero <laughs> swears this room number hotline is still active. So I say on the podcast, as this movie is going, we make Shane call this number and see if it still operates. What do you think? Yay. All right, let's go. Okay, Shane, are you ready to dial this in? 
All right. Tucker Carlson, your opinion, please. What's the number? <laughs> Fuck. Number them. is three two three. Yep. Six five four. Six five four. Six one nine two. Put it on speaker and see if we can hear what happens. Closer. <laughs> I don't hear anything. Yeah, I heard the first ring and I heard anything else. I think Shane got killed. No! <laughs> we couldn't hear anything. Gone! <laughs> You're tearing me apart, phone! <laughs> well, Greg, Greg Sestero is full of shit. It's disconnected. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lame. What do we learn? So. Because Greg Sestero said that, now everything he ha- said should be called into question. Yeah. Oh my god, I read a book for no reason. Yep. We, we did it. We watched The Room for Christmas. I have 10,000 other little factoids, but fuck it, I don't care. What do we do now? Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, uh, happy holidays. We have each got each other a gift. So starting with our dear guest, who's not really a guest anymore. He's kind of just a permanent placement on the podcast. Dan, (laughs) open your gift, please. Open my gift? All right, that's fine. Uh, Yeah, open it. Can we guys go fishing after this outside, please? I kind of want to go fishing. I'm I'm, I'm frozen to death. We're on a pool in Massachusetts. (laughs) Oh, anyway. All right, let me open my gift. Whose house is this? Um, Tommy's part of it's a cousin. set. It's not actually Tommy's. It's a set. Wow, well, hold on. Head of the Democratic Party, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, look at this. <laughs> it's what is it, Dan? Christmas. Yeah, it's a uh, Christmas sweater that says Coors Light. Yay. Yay. Merry Christmas, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. It, nothing says Coors Light like me in America. Okay, Shane, open up your present now. Tucker Carlson. Live from my house. Oh my god. This Christmas. <laughs> 19. <laughs> oh my god, it's a diehard sweater. Yippee ki <laughs> motherfuckers. It yes! <laughs> it's the best Christmas film of all time. Happy Hanukkah, you bitch. Nothing says Christmas like an American New York cop killing Russians. Yeah. Well, Germans. You really do. Oh, all right. Open my mind so we can get the fuck out of here. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, we're on your turn. And mine's is Christmas sweater. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> it's... Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's a picture. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a picture of um, of Jesus as a uh, 70s basketball player and says, Jesus is the real MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Satan. Yay. Because you are the savior of this podcast, Ron. That's why. Jesus oh dunking on all the haters. <laughs> Hating on the haters all day. Oh my uh, god. We have done it. We've gotten to this fucking miserable podcast. Yeah, I don't think I want to watch this film. Okay, okay. so let's go back. To, um, Dan, our guest, would you recommend watching The Room? Uh, It's the part with the... Maybe the pinnacle of the... Best, worst, horrible, great film of all time. I think if you never watched it before, watch it, but watch it with a group of friends or some friends. Yep. And then that's about it. Agreed. Yeah, don't watch it yeah. alone. And don't say yeah, don't do say best of the worstest things because they copyright that shit. They'll come at you. I heard those guys <laughs> are super litigious. <laughs> oh. I legitimately hate this movie, but I have some of my favorite memories with Dan and Shane right here watching this movie. Yeah. So... It's the worst thing I've ever seen, and I hate it, but it's got some good memories to it. The The only purpose of this film is basically to watch it once and then show it to other people and see their reaction and enjoy it. And then once in a while, you'll see some random stuff you've never seen before. But And speaking yeah. of which, one day, Shane and I have a movie to show you, Dan, so if we get to hang out oh, yeah. this winter holiday, we have, a, we have a wonderful movie for you. It's incredible. Okay. Well, after maybe after we uh, go fishing, uh, we can uh, go to the some that Chinese boy I got. Uh, welcome to Moose Maybe he has it. So. Go fish yourself. Um, 
Happy holidays. <laughs> Thank you for listening from Wasted Potential Podcast. And go fuck yourselves. Bye. Now, also, happy Kwanzaa. God, Jesus Christ. I said it's, holidays. It's Christmas time. Nice time oh, tomorrow. Happy, happy sex and sex Santa pants. Santa. <laughs> Blow jobs. Hail Satan. All right, I'm sorry. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Take that, Krampus. Make sure your levels don't fucking suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. This is so beautiful. The Claus Chris Christine's. Claus Chris Christine's. Claus kiss Christine's. They kiss these Christine's kiss Claus. I don't see the issue here. Yeah, I'm understanding. Okay, we get a lot of weird dudes though. Why does the link you sent me have subtitles English three and four? What, what's the difference between the two Englishes? <laughs> I don't know, but go to three, I suppose. All right. So, uh, what do we do now? Okay, let's start this. Yeah, bitch. What's the, what are the drinking games? Oh shit! Oh wow. yeah, we can't say. Oh oh fuck! I forgot about this. Okay, yeah. we fucked yeah. this up. We have to have real yeah. drinking games. We also have to have the secret ones. I forgot about this. Yeah, oh. I've got, I've got like maybe like ten or fifteen of like real drinking games that that could fuck us or be okay. Okay, so the, I guess Dan only did his due diligence here for the first time. So what do you got, Dan? Uh, well, uh, you drink every time there's a fade out or hard bad cut scene transition. Uh, we also have when someone unnecessarily walks in. Oh my um, god! <laughs> How about every time a, a plot line is introduced but never addressed after yeah. that scene. Every time uh, Johnny does a soft chuckle. And, uh, um, every time there's there's ADR in this scene. So if, if they do it once, that scene's over with. The in- the entire movie is ADR, by the way. Yeah. Uh, every time uh, someone compliments Johnny, like, wonderful person, he's a great guy, he's a best friend. I like that one. Oh, how about um, every time his... Uh, who who plays the the George Sisteros? Um, oh. Wh- no, that is who plays him, but what's his character's name Mark. again? Mark. Mark. Anytime Mark's confused at the situation. Or uh, every time uh, someone lies, every time there's a cut to San Francisco skyline. That, that was the one I was going to do, I think. Okay. Oh, I like that one. Or every time the football is tossed. I like any time someone it, like compliments Johnny. Okay, just, like so it could be like wonderful person. He's your best friend. He's a yeah. good. He's a good future husband. He's got a <laughs> micro penis, kind of like that. Okay. Okay. So he's so rich. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So okay. So Shane, yours compliments Johnny. Dan, your San Francisco skyline. We'll come back in and, oh, then, I, and then I'll explain the secret ones. Okay. And everyone has their secret ones, right? I think everyone knows. I'm trying to think. What, Dan's. I'm trying to think. Yeah, my head I know. Now. I know the one you gave to me. I know the one I gave to Danny or to you for Danny, right? Who did I give mine to? Let me go back. You, you gave it to you, me. You, for oh, Danny. I gave. I gave it to Danny. Danny, you got yours. <laughs> uh, Danny. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta check my phone. I'm going back to my phone. Oh, hold hi, on. Oh hi, Danny. <laughs> oh. Okay. I know the one for we Danny. We were so prepared for this. I know the. One, I know we we. I've had a long fucking day. Okay, I know the one for Danny. I got that one. Let me find the one I okay. give for Shane. I got. I know. I got it. Is it the one, the one I gave you, or the one you gave me? Jesus Christ, people! The one. It's the one I gave you. I said agreed. I'm just gonna start te- eating. You texted me. <laughs> he figured out what it was. <laughs> yeah, that was a side bet we had. <laughs> we had a side bet. Danny, can you text me again? You texted me what it is. Yeah, hold on. My brain's fucked. Hold on. Okay, we'll go back in. Mm. I'll I'll say drinking games. You guys tell them, and then I'll, do, I'll explain the secret secret one. God damn, it's gonna be a bitch to edit it. God, this ramen's good. <laughs> yes, yay. Okay, yes, that's what I thought it was. Perfect. Okay, we're all set. Okay. John Jacob Jingleheimer Vax.